Hello and welcome to the Congo Hour. We want to thank you so much for watching. My name is Trippy. Join along with my dynamic hostess, uh, Wayna. How are you doing today, Wayna? I'm wonderful, Trippy. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing all right. This is our last show of the year. It is. How many years have we been doing this? I wish I knew. It's been. Can you try to figure it out? I can't. I'm not sure how long we've been in this studio, but it was probably about three or four years before that, maybe. If now, maybe three years before that? Yeah. I can't remember. So would you say we've been doing it at least? I don't know. Maybe the, um, maybe Avin knows or maybe Dave knows or maybe somebody in there. I think Dave came later. I can't remember, but it's been, let's make this our. <laughs> <laughs> pull it out of a hat. Yeah, 15? Just, I think it's more than 15. Is it? Okay, let's just. We'll make it our 15, 15 year anniversary. I just said it's been more than 15. Okay, we'll make it our 16 year anniversary. <laughs> and we've been doing this for 16 years. We've had so many entertaining guests and so many um, just thought provoking topics. It's been a really good time. It really has. Uh, I think you started first. You came on here with, um, by yourself or with Linda Henry? With Linda. With Linda Henry and then I joined you and it's been a wrap ever since. Yeah, maybe, yeah. so maybe, um, Apostle um, um, Henry is Henry Tucker is watching, and mm -hmm. she can have Jordan or somebody let me know. But yeah, I was okay. trying to think how long it's been. <laughs> it's been exciting. What do you think we need to change up? If we need to change up anything for next year? For next year? For the show. Ooh. That might be a. Um, I wish we had a phone, a phone line, and we maybe. Maybe young um, people can call you or text you. Yeah, text me or call, call me, 521-7325, and let us know what we can do better. Okay. For, oh, yeah. for give, give Wayne a text. Yeah. Try not to call, but text her at 521-7325, and just let us know, like Wayne just said, what we can do better uh, for, yeah. for our 17th season. It was, <laughs> we're going to we get the year right. <laughs> but um, it's, it's amazing like just being out and seeing people I went to the grocery store cook dinner tonight trippy is that um is that um something that I'm I'm doing better how, how many days a week do you cook or I a just month? said I'm doing a better month. how many days a month do you cook <laughs> let me see there's 31 <laughs> days out of the month I think I cook maybe around 15 of them do you well, that's not bad that's good oh, okay. what about Gundy he cooks does he, more does than he, I do. So he cooks the other half? Yeah, because here's the thing, and we're transparent. Mm -hmm. He doesn't, <laughs> he all sometimes complains about my cooking, so I kind of pull back from uh, cooking. Okay. Right. Like it needs more of this, more of that, mm -hmm. and I don't, <laughs> I don't know, my like season it yourself. You, um, my mom, speaking of you and Gundy. O-M-G, don't said, you bet. My mom said you sent her a picture of your wedding dress. <laughs> you didn't even tell me. You didn't even like show it to me first. I was I'm hurt. I'm just looking at dresses. But you sent it to her. You don't, I'm just she, getting ideals. Oh my goodness. I was like, I couldn't have been Wayne. Trippy, because if I picture. send you anything, it will be posted <laughs> up front and center. You will have it on a billboard and everything else. So that's true. She really, you really did send her a text. I saw, I saw, I sent her a picture of a dress. Yes. Of a wedding dress. A potential <laughs> of wedding a dress. Potential. And I had to hear it from her and not from you, but. I don't even believe she told you all that. Why wouldn't she tell me? Why wouldn't you tell me? I, I, I just told you it. why. Yeah. I, don't tell <laughs> I couldn't, you. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Oh, that's okay though. But so well, he was shocked. Or something. I was hurt. Hurt. Yes. I mean, I'm supposed. Me and you are supposed to be tighter than you and my we mom. We are. But Trippy, I'm not gonna send you a dress. You would be like, oh, whatever. Still. If it was let me, something let me, else. Give me the chance to say, oh, whatever. You didn't give me a chance to say it. You know what I mean? Are that's, you that's serious? That's something like really special. Oh. Wasn't that in your first wedding? <laughs> you were. All right then. Wedding. Exactly. <laughs> Wasn't I in your wedding? And, and now you're planning another one and don't even send me a dress, the picture of the dress. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> you just admit that you were wrong. I'm wrong. Okay. I can't believe we okay, so, are having this So let's talk about that. Okay, let's talk about it. What's the it. progress? What are, any updates about the wedding? I don't know. I don't have any more, any new updates. Uh, do we know what month it's going to be in? I do. Are you going to share it with all of our supporters? I'm not. <laughs> you can just tell me later. Okay. I'll keep it between us. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but congratulations. I'm glad you're making some progress. I don't, I, I don't think last time we talked about it, 
Did you have a month in mind? I think you did. I did. July or August. Is that, I think that's. Very good, yeah, trippy. see, I'm July or August. You have to promise to give us monthly updates. <laughs> as soon as I get them, I'll let you on Is that a deal? Yeah, but okay. as soon as I get them, I'll, okay. I'll share. Has he, has he done like the official? No, that's what I'm. So. Hello. So that's no. what, that's what so we, need to, we need to get on Gundy. What's his number? <laughs> Let's, let's blow. Let's blow his two phone up. Two seven five <laughs> eight two four three. Call Gundy up and ask him what the holdup is. <laughs> two seven five eight two four three. Two Call seven him up. five eight two. Can we put that number on the screen, Evan? Two seven five I eight love this two show. <laughs> four three. That is Gundy's number. Wayna's boyfriend, but soon to be fiance. We need to ask him. Find out what's going on. How come yeah. he hasn't proposed yet? How long have you all been together? Five years. Five years. Yeah. I'll, Looking for dresses and have dates in mind. He hasn't even. I'm not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what to say. We we're, did we're go gonna look. Find out. We're going to find out. We did go look. What's that number one more time? Um, 275-8243. 275-8243. I mean, we need you to put that on the screen so people can call him for the whole show. So we can get to the end of this situation. <laughs> yeah. I'm mad at him now, too. You are? Yeah, I'm mad at both of y'all. Don't be mad at me. No, I'm mad at both of y'all. So who, who do we have coming on the show? <laughs> we have Coley coming on the show. He has a, um, I don't want to say it. Well, it, it, it's, it's leading into an event. It's called okay. Out of Ashes. And it's just dealing with his experience with him and his son, mm -hmm. which I'm, I, I'm, I'm glad to have this conversation with him. Um, and I'm sure that he will get across how important it is as we talked with um, Tamra and her son, mm -hmm. how important it is for fathers to be in their children's lives, no right. matter what the situation or circumstance was. And you know what? I And hopefully I'm, I'm um, charging my iPad because I, for some reason I couldn't print any pictures. Okay. But I have a picture. Today would have been my grandfather's 94th birthday. Oh, wow. okay. And anybody knows me knows that I adore and mm -hmm. love my <laughs> grandfather. Like if your dad would, would laugh at me like <laughs> I would leave home, then call Pop, come back and get me. He come <laughs> home and get me. I leave again. He come back and get me. Like, but no matter what I went through in life, even though he wasn't my biological father, he was mm -hmm. he was the father figure that I had in my life because right. I did not grow up with my father in my life mm -hmm. um, either. So just to know to have him, especially for a female, it's like you know, daddy's little girl or whatever. Yeah. So I think that's who I was to him. So yeah, I could do no wrong by Pop. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Yeah, okay. so. Yeah, Coley has a very powerful story. Yes, so he really let's, does. Let's get him on so we don't wanna um, take any time away from what he has to, okay. has to tell. All right. So we're gonna take a quick break. Oh, uh, okay, uh, well before we take that break, <laughs> the number that's on your screen <laughs> is Gundy's number. So please call him or text him and find out when he is going to um, propose to Wayne. Does he need the, the proper, sp you, want, you, you need his name up because people. Gundy. G-U-N-D-I. There we go. Call him up, text him, Call email him, him do something. Do something. We need to figure out what's going Cause on. Because time is ticking. I know. It's July will be here before we know. December 28th. Something little crazy excuse. So, yeah, let's find out. Okay? <laughs> so, call him up and, and uh, ask him what's going on. And in the meantime, we're going to take a really quick break, and yes. we'll be right back. Good evening and welcome back to the Congo Hour. <laughs> Hope that you have enjoyed the show so far. Um, I text Gundy and asked him if he got any calls. He said so far he received five calls. Yeah, keep up the great work. 275-8243. 275-8243. What is going on? What the deal That's is. Right. All right, there we go. 275-8243 to find out. If you want to know why Gundy has not proposed to Wayna yet. It's been five years. They're talking about she's out shopping for dresses and my mom just called you up, mad at you because <laughs> mad at me. She made it. Oh yeah, you. mad at me. I didn't know. I, I forgot she told me it was a secret. I wasn't supposed to say anything. I, I was just. I don't remember. But she, mom just called Wayne up saying she's mad at me. <laughs> she gonna kill you. <laughs> she I afraid so. I won't trust her anymore. <laughs> See what you started? I was hurt. You know, I, people do crazy things when they hurt. Yeah, when they hurt. Wait, All before right. we go, because this is, <laughs> we were we were reminiscing on things that, that happened, and we remember, you uh, remembered, uh, yeah, I'll yeah, been. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, I guess when, uh, 
we haven't been able to put up graphics for a while because of the equipment, but when we could put them up, um, we, we were interviewing somebody that had a play, and it was like, and Love was the title of the play, and Avin was in the control room, and he was typing up the graphics, and he had just ordered some chicken. <laughs> From the Chinese store. <laughs> yeah, from the Chinese store. So instead of putting the name of the play on the TV, he put like love and chicken. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, what uh, the so world? What was he doing back there? <laughs> that was funny. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, he right. He spelled his name yeah. right and everything. Last name and everything. <laughs> We're going to get to the bottom of this by 9 o'clock. Right. By nine. Uh -huh. All right. Well, um, Trippy, as we stated earlier, I'm really excited about our guest that's coming on because it's dealing with fatherhood. So, okay. we're, you ready to go? Yep. So, so, so take down Gundy's number for right now because I don't <laughs> want them thinking that that's our guest telephone mm -hmm. number. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Welcome, yeah, thank welcome you. to the show. Welcome back to the show. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for having us. So, tell us what brings you here this evening. Well. We're here to talk about our um, artistic healing experience, which we call Out of the Ashes. Um, it's a dramatization of the healing of the relationship between my son and I. Um, I was out of his life for a 14 year period due to incarceration. And during that time period, we had limited contact. Mm -hmm. And we both knew coming when I came home that we had to do some things to try to heal that relationship. And you know, it's, it's a slow process. And so we just wanted to share that out, you know what I mean? Bear, kind of bear our scars so that okay. other people may heal. Wow, yeah. that's um, very courageous for it both is, of you. Thank you. Definitely yeah. it so is. So I guess, can we, um, let's, let's introduce um, your son first. Let us. Sure. You want to introduce yourself? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Amar Melton. Amar, and how old are you? 23. 23. Mm. Um, let's start, who should we start with, Lena? It will, I guess let's start with his dad because okay. okay. he's the one that had to go away. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how did that make you feel knowing that you, how, first of all, how old was your son when you were incarcerated? When I, when I um, got incarcerated, my son was two. Okay. okay. When I came home, he was 16. All right. So. And, and during that time, did he ever come and visit you in, in, in prison? He came, he came sparingly. Okay. Um, one is because it's, you know, it's a, uh, not a good situation. It's an inhospitable um, conditions. Okay. And uh, his mother expressed to me early on that he, when he left from the visits, he, you know, he had a lot of emotions. Oh, so okay. it wasn't a good thing for him to come right. down. So. So I always, I always hear about that. I guess you see it in movies sometimes. Mm -hmm. When um, uh, sometimes the one who is incarcerated says, you know, they don't want their child coming. Right. Yeah. Some, sometimes because of that, because of the, the emotional effect that it can have on them. And sometimes they say that they do mm -hmm. want them. So I guess to kind of keep that, to keep the bond. But he, he didn't come too often. Not very often. Okay. No. All right. No. Do you remember <clears throat> how you felt going to go visit your dad? Yeah, I mean, it's tough. You know, of course, I'm excited to see my dad. But on All the right. same note, when the process of getting inside of the prison mm. is enough to break you then and there. I mean, you go through cages and you see mm. barbed wire and all of that. And when you finally wand it down with the metal detector and pat it down, then you finally get to see your dad. And it's... It's tough because you, you get to enjoy that time, but you look around and it's, you're basically in a cage, mm -hmm. you know? So no, no matter how you dress it up, it's still tough right. for anyone to see, especially and to know that your father is staying and then you have to leave, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, so. Was it, was it one-on-one -on -one contact or was it talking through the phone contact when you did your visits? Both. Both, yeah. okay. In Gander Hill, um, they have like the plexiglass mm -hmm. set up with the telephone, so. Mm -hmm. I was there for like a year, a little over a year before I um, ended up going to Smyrna. Okay. And Smyrna, it was, uh, it was contact visits. Mm -hmm. The thing about Smyrna is when I went there, it went through like iterations. So when we, when I first got there, mm -hmm. it was uh, like a table, you know what I mean? Like a knee level table. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, you could sit and interact and talk. And he mm -hmm. could even sit next to me. Um, as years went by, they changed the, um, the visiting structure. So mm -hmm. they have like a three foot wall up there. And so for smaller children that come in there, you can't even, really can't even see like oh, the smaller okay. kids Good. and they have yeah. to sit on the bench so mm. okay. it's, uh, it's challenging. How old were you the last time that you went and visited your dad? Do you remember? I was probably um I was around 13. Okay. And the, the last time I went to visit him was probably one of the, the toughest it was the toughest visit. Mm -hmm. Sad you know because I'm, I'm getting a little bit older I'm starting right. to wonder where my father is and, and starting to understand life a little more mm -hmm. so to go there and see like fully understand all right this is my right, dad right. and i didn't know when he was coming home mm -hmm. 
I didn't have a date or anything. So it's like, I've been dealing with this my entire life. Mm -hmm. And to sit there and, and, and look him in the eyes. And it, it got emotional that visit. We both, yeah. we both cried, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, cried yeah, for imagine. a while. Did you have a father mm -hmm. figure I was uh, besides your, your, besides Coley? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, I lived with my grandparents for a while. So okay. my grandfather was definitely my father figure. Okay. Um, and he, he did everything. I mean, granted he's up there in age, but he did everything that he could. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. I'm smiling so, that you said that because my father was not in my life and my grandparents raised me too. Okay. And I guess, I mean, they do the best that they can um, with, with, with whatever it is that they had. Right. But how um, has, after you got out of jail, how, have, how has the relationship been? Has it always been this bond that the two of you share right now? It, it was a process. Mm -hmm. um, so in effect, when I came home, we really didn't know each other. Mm -hmm. I didn't know right. him and he didn't know me. Right. You know, he knew, knew him as, I was his father and he my son, but the memories and the connections and things, cause you know, part of being a father, a parent is biological, but a big part is environmental as mm -hmm. well. You know what I mean? Dealing interactions, right. shared memories and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And we really just had to get to know each other. You know what I mean? Little idiosyncrasies. Mm -hmm. and, different ways about each other. So it was, it's definitely been a process and it's yeah. an ongoing process, yeah. you know. Wait, at any point, were you ever mad at your father? Um, not really, no. I mean, no, I, I wouldn't say I was mad at all. Okay. You, you know, you, it's a lot of emotions that come with it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hurt, um, embarrassment in certain cases, okay. um, but n never really mad, just a lot. I spent most of the time just not understanding. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, wow. So, so now you have this um, out of the ashes. Out of the ashes. Did I say it right? Yeah, out no, you got ashes. it. I was just yeah. repeating okay. it because okay. it's, it's, it's something <laughs> that's <laughs> it's close right. to me. Yeah. yeah. So um, explain that to me. So out of the ashes is a um, it's a dramatic experience. We touch on my father's younger years and then everything that I felt growing up without a father. And then mm -hmm. the, so it's three scenes. The first scene is my father, his younger years, and different things that he's experienced in. Um, Different, different way, different experience that he's had with his parents, mm -hmm. um, conversation that he's had with himself all the way up and through to him coming home. So he explains all of that. And then act two is me and I go and I explain the different emotions that I felt, different things that triggered the emotions. And then act three is a, um, a reenactment of when he came home, um, a conversation that we had. And just, I don't wanna give too much away, but all that's right. act okay. three. Yeah. Right. So when and where is this taking place? It is taking place um, January the 3rd at 2 p.m. at Theater N okay. in Wilmington, okay. Delaware, in um, the New Morris Building, mm -hmm. the building right behind the uh, DuPont Hotel. Okay. Yeah. And it's, uh, you two are the only people who are in the young? Um, yes. In it? Oh, mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. So what, what made you do this? Like, whose idea was it? Um, Out of the Ashes goes back a, a few years. Actually, okay. my wife and I, we, um, when we were dating, we were kind of talking about different things and mm -hmm. how to develop, um, we were looking at doing a father and son banquet. Okay. And um, so we kind of, you know, life got in the way, kind of put it on the back burner. Mm -hmm. And we had recently started talking about it again. And my son and I, so on Sundays, every Sunday we get together. And most of the time we walk like Brandywine or we go to um, Battery Park and we walk and we talk about different things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what I mean? he's an entrepreneur. You know, what I mean, I have an entrepreneurial spirit as well. And we're thinking about, you know, we need to do some things that are, are close to our heart, things that we're passionate about, and but things that other people can relate to and experiences that they need to share. And we started talking and then, you know what I mean, because we're both uh, Seth Golden fans. He's this big marketing guru. Mm -hmm. And one of the things he always speaks about is doing things that are remarkable. Okay. And so we, you know what I mean, you're looking around, looking here and there, and then, you know what I mean, really the remarkable thing is, is our relationship. Uh -huh. Everybody doesn't, you know what I mean, everybody, and I thank God for that. Because everybody doesn't have the opportunity to come home and to build and connect a relationship with it, with their child, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And that's a beautiful thing. Right. Most yeah. definitely. I applaud you for being so transparent you. with, you know, being incarcerated. And not everybody would tell that part of mm -hmm. the story. So mm -hmm. I applaud you for your openness well, you. and your willingness to accept your dad no matter what. Absolutely. Yes. I know that means. Holy stories, like I, I was saying during the uh, intro, it's just remarkable yeah. um, what he has done for himself and with, with, with his family and mm -hmm. then for the community. Mm -hmm. I mean, the man does more than people who weren't 
away for 14 right. years, right. you know. Right. He's done some incredible things. So I just want to thank you for that. Right. Thank you, bro. I appreciate it. Thank you. So, I mean, you, he is a prime example of the rehabilitation part mm -hmm. of people coming out of incarceration. Right. You are one of the stories that many don't really get to hear about or see about. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Can I weigh in on that a little you bit? You sure mm -hmm. can. Um, it's a reason, you know what I mean, for, for me being the place I am. You know what I mean? First of all, it was a foundation that was laid. Mm -hmm. you know, my, mom, my mother passed this, um, this past year. Um, mm -hmm. Come up March 7th, it'll be a year. So my mother passed, you know what I mean? I had my mother and father in my life, all of my life. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't perfect, but I've had both from there and I had a foundation. All right. So when I strayed from that, I had something to come back to. Mm -hmm. um, and that's okay. important. Yeah, the other thing is, so there's three men. There's a gentleman by the name of Edward Fountain. There's a gentleman by the name of um, Tyree Ruru, and a gentleman by the name of Kenny Rogers, who are all doing uh, life in prison in um, Smyrna, James T. Vaughan Correctional Center. Mm -hmm. And these men literally saved my life because they took time and invested in me and helped for me to connect with who I was, to put some pieces together, to tear down some of these walls, mm -hmm. and to be able to deal with the real interpersonal issues that I needed to deal with to come home and um, just to be a man. So. Is that something that they do down there, like a, as a part of a program? <clears throat> or you, or you two, or you, the well, four no. of you just re developed um, your relationship? Yeah, it, it, okay. was the, it was the relationship. Okay. So they're, they're involved, all of them are involved in um, Project Aware, okay. and they do that, but this was something aside. So Project Aware, you know, I mean, we interact with the children, with mm -hmm. the, young, uh, the young people that come into the prison. Right. But these relationships were built walking laps on the yard, mm -hmm. or, you know, right. I mean, on tears. And, conversations and in chow halls and things like that and mm -hmm. it's just over time and it just poured so much into me I'm, I'll be forever indebted to them so when, when you um, when you were there you hadn't totally decided like within yourself to be a different person when no. you got out no I yeah. hadn't no okay and not for I would say probably for the first eh, about seven or eight years I yeah. still was yeah I was wavering I was wavering mm -hmm. I really was and then, yeah. they, then that relationship uh, strengthened, and then that's when they help you to make some better decisions. Yeah, but they were in my ear the whole time. Were they? Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they were in my ear the whole time, and it's just, uh -huh. you know, it was a, a culmination of things that came together, man, to support, you know what I mean, this life, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. that I'm in blessed with. So. Okay. And You're married. Yes. Do you have any children? I do. You do? How's your relationship with your children? How many children do you have? I have two. I have a daughter. She's four, oh. Aliana, and I have a son, Ahmad. He's two. Okay. And how's your relationship with, with your children? My relationship with my children is strong. I spoil them. <laughs> You're supposed to. Um, <laughs> you still make them rotten, but you got to spoil them. <laughs> There's a difference. It I is. don't know if I know where the line is. <laughs> <laughs> I say they're loved, not spoiled, <laughs> but yeah, okay. But, um, it's, it's definitely, my relationship is strong with my children. It, I openly show them I love them, I hug them, kiss them and everything. Mm -hmm. Let them know that I'm there for them because I know what, I know what it feels like to not have that connection. Mm -hmm. it, it's a hole. Mm -hmm. It's a hole. Um, so I, I, I give them, I pour into them as much as I can. And I also expose them to my family. Mm -hmm. I mean, not my family, our family, but I expose them to everyone in the family mm -hmm. so that they can feel that love and feel that wholeness of family mm -hmm. that I crave for a while. Mm -hmm. And I learned that from him, watching him, because I've, I've never, I wasn't there. Right. I didn't experience that piece, so I right. watch how he interacts with, um, with my grandchildren, mm -hmm. and it's amazing. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> so how much are the tickets for the, um, for Out of the Ash? $100. That's no. all? No, they are about $20. <laughs> 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 They're $20. Um, and we are actually very, very close. I don't have an exact count I would have to get from my wife, but we're very close to selling out this first venue. But oh. we will have a second. We will have another venue. Okay. After, I mean, yeah, another venue after this gotta, one. So. Real quick, I gotta give a shout out to your wife too. Yeah, yeah. Um, absolutely. Yeah, she's, um, she was out there. I don't know if I told you about I me mean, um, when I was caroling. No, Patty no. came out caroling yeah, with she you? Yeah, well, she did for like a block. <laughs> and then, she, then all of a sudden her phone rang and she, she, had, to, had, and she had, had to take this important phone call uh -huh. so we're all caroling and she's like a half a block behind us talking on the phone the whole time uh -huh. but she was out there in the beginning though <laughs> so I gotta, gotta give her a shout out nah she was more it was more than a block I'm oh, just okay. you're exaggerating her. yeah I'm just messing with it it was, it was a lot of fun though we did it a couple Mondays ago right around um between Washington and Market and like 20 23rd and 27th street right there were about like six or seven hours it was fun 
Uh, everybody was just singing. Nobody really knew all the words, so it was just <laughs> <laughs> sort of like yeah. last Sunday. Yeah, so exactly like that. But it was a lot, a lot of fun. So yeah. just want to give her a shout out yeah. and everyone else who came out with this. Yeah, she's very, she's very supportive mm, yeah, of she is. their she is. relationship, and I love that too because sometimes blended families, a lot of times, blended families need to know how to coexist with one another. Mm -hmm. So I commend. Um, your wife for, for um, being a part of that, mm -hmm. most Absolutely. definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Is there anything either one of you want to say before we close out? You said another venue, so you, you're going on the road. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so we're doing this one on January the 3rd, and we're going to be doing a um, part of the Raising Kings. We're going to do a workshop there. Okay. Um, that's on January the 17th. But in February, I want to say the third week in February, we're going to, um, to L.A. So okay. we're going to be doing a performance uh, <laughs> with the National um, Fatherhood and Family uh, National Fatherhood and Family Coalition, mm -hmm. uh, their national conference in um, L.A. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, very so good. There. Congratulations! Yeah, three thousand miles away. <laughs> 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 I was thinking you're going to say like, oh, we're going to Chester, yeah, and then we go on to yeah. L.A. <laughs> that's what yeah, I'm yeah, talking yeah, about. Right. Yeah. We're going to let it take us wherever it will. I know that's okay. right. So you said, once again, uh, just give a recap of when and where and how people can get tickets. Absolutely. It's January the 3rd um, from at 2 p.m., 2 p.m. to 6 p.m., including the reception. So that's this Saturday? This Saturday. Okay. Um, at Theater Inn in the Morris Building behind the, um, it's, uh, I want to say, 11th and Tatnall Street. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, so we have some tickets. We still, um, The Eventbrite link is up on my Facebook page as well okay. as um, Out of Ashes and on um, Patty's as well. And um, you can call 302-507-4623. So, but again, we are Five, very close. Six, wait a minute. T say the number again. 302-507-4623. Okay. We it's two, three. We ain't messed it up. But I did we're not. Gonna, we're going we're to we're make it right on the screen. So people can <laughs> go on and open. long number. That was the app, and of course it was. So we're going to put the right <laughs> number on the screen, and they can call you. They can go to, you said, event right. We have yeah, we we had had that event up there. Right. Yeah, I'm okay. glad you asked. Okay. Because yeah. it's been up there. Absolutely. All right, yeah, so we'll okay. make sure we get that on there as soon as possible. Yeah. We also want to give away some tickets. Okay. Well, you know, before we do that, what can people expect coming to the play? They can expect to feel, they can expect to feel whether it's a connection with their parent or a loved one or a guardian or somebody who's supposed to raise them, mm -hmm. that connection to be, to be strengthened mm -hmm. or if there's a, a, a disconnect for it to be exacerbated, you know. Um, okay. But it's definitely gonna be some type of internal um, compulsion mm -hmm. to act, you know what I mean, on that. Um, and I, I wanna, I'm gonna say this, Trippy, um, mm -hmm. So we went out and spoke to uh, about eight, we had about eight appointments with prominent people, pastors and whatnot in the city. Mm -hmm. And out of the eight, seven of these, and these, these are prominent black men in this community and, and, and some um, Caucasian, seven of the eight had uh, disruptive relationships with their parents, mm -hmm. wow. one of their parents or caregivers, yeah. So it, it's mm -hmm. a strong, it's a definitely a strong mm -hmm. topic, mm -hmm. a strong issue, yeah. All yeah. right, so we're gonna give away, uh, let's give away six tickets. Okay. But I want to give them away to someone, um, I guess, who has the courage to call and say that they have a strange relationship mm -hmm. with their child or with their parent. Mm -hmm. um, call and they can call you. Mm -hmm. Want them to call? Let's, let's have them call Coley. And do that and make it easier. Call that yeah. number? Yeah. Get a number that's on the screen. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we probably won't be able to give the winners immediately, but we will. Um, Give away two tickets to the first six. How many did we say? Three, t two tickets to the first three callers. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Awesome. We want to try to um, have the winners to, to to be someone who either has a strange relationship, mm -hmm. um, strange relationship with a child, or a child who has a strange relationship with their parent, and want, wants to um, go to this uh, this place together. Yeah. So we're going to go on the honor code and uh, give that number a call that's on the screen. You can tell Coley your story, and then uh, we'll see you on Saturday. All right. All right. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you both right. for Thank coming you. on Thank and sharing you. your story. Thank yes. you very much. All right. All we're going right. to take, um, take another quick break, and then we'll be right back. And during the break, Alvin, we can put that other number up. Oh, yeah, this is <laughs> <laughs> serious about that. Huh? <laughs> 
Good evening and welcome back to the show. I have, um, I think, just a couple of announcements. The first one is from Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church, 20 Wesley Boulevard. They are having a December 31st celebration. It starts at 6.30 and it ends at 10.30. And once again, they are located at 20 Wesley Boulevard and Pastor Donald Dunnigan is their pastor. And also, Mana Christian Fellowship is having a event. Actually, it's 21 days and I'm pulling up the information. I apologize for the technical difficulties. Oops, I don't see it anymore. Um, so I know Sharita's watching. Sharita, if you would be kind and forward me the flyer for the 21-day celebration at Mana Christian Fellowship, I would greatly appreciate it. That's what I was getting ready to do. That's what I was trying to pull up the picture. We want to say um, happy birthday to Pastor Clifford Johnson from Shiloh Baptist Church. Um, may God bless you with many, many more. I have a picture of you, but for some reason um, it's not coming up as well as Trippy. <laughs> is what you doing <laughs> if anyone has the information from <laughs> for man I'm heard Trippy. if you would be so kind and Send me the flyer. I would greatly appreciate it before our time is up. Also, um, there is a New Year's Eve celebration at Ezon Fair Baptist Church, 1400 B Street, starting at 9 p.m., where Pastor C.T. Curry is the pastor. And I'm going to take a quick break, and hopefully I'll be back with the information for the Mana Christian Fellowship mm -hmm. event that's coming up real soon. Thank you so very much. Okay, at this time we're going to have our funeral announcements. Uh, first, we have Miss Ann Jourdain, age 71, departed this life December the 16th. Her funeral services will take place tomorrow at 11 a.m. at the Sharon Temple Seventh Day Adventist Church on 20th and Washington Streets. Viewing will be from 9 to 10.45 only, and her burial will be in the Grace Lawn Memorial Park. Mr. Stella Roan, age 73, departed this life December the 17th. Her services will also be tomorrow at 12 noon at the Congo Funeral Home on 24th and Market Streets. Viewing will be from 10 to 12, and her burial will be in the Silverbrook Cemetery. Miss Marie Nesbitt, also known as Pat, age 67, reported this life December the 21st. Her services will be on Tuesday, December the 30th at 11 a.m. at the Congo Funeral Home on 24th and Market Streets. Viewing will be from 9 to 11, and her burial will be in the Silverbrook Cemetery. Miss Dolores O. Brown age 69, departed this life on December the 24th. Her services will be on Friday, January the 2nd at 11 a.m. Viewing will be from 9 to 10.45 only. And the, the location will be published in the news journal on Wednesday, December the 30th and Thursday, January the 1st. And her burial will take place in the Grace Lawn Memorial Park. Mr. Nathan Clark, age 25, Departed this life December the 21st. His funeral services will be on Friday at 11 a.m. at the Congo Funeral Home on 24th and Market Streets. Viewing will be from 9 to 10.45 only, and his burial will be in the Grace Lawn Memorial Park. Miss Arthea Emery, age 36. Departed this life December the 19th. Her funeral services will be on Saturday, January the 3rd at 12 noon at the Episcopal Church of Saints Andrew and Matthew, 719 North Shipley Street in Wilmington. Viewing will be from 10 to 12 and her burial will be private. Services for Miss Doris Knotts, age 75, 
who passed away on December the 18th. Her memorial services will be on January the 24th at 3 p.m. at the Simpson United Methodist Church, 907 Centerville Road in Belvedere. The services will be announced for Ms. Maxine Anderson, age 66, who passed away on December the 12th. The services will also be announced for Mr. Curtis McIver, age 60, who passed away on December the 21st. And services will be announced for Ms. Dorothy Jones, age 85, who passed away on December the 25th. And that does conclude all of our funeral announcements. If you have any questions, please call us at the funeral home at 652-8887. Also, you can go to our website at www.congofuneralhome.com and get any further information that you may need. You may also leave a condolence for the family. This does conclude the show. We want to uh, thank you again for watching. And again, if you have any questions and any suggestions on how we can uh, improve our show, please give Wayna a call or send her a text at 521-7325, 521-7325. And if you, if you forget her number, you can always uh, just uh, call us at the funeral home at 652-8887. Also, if you ever want to be a part of the show, uh, try to give Wayna a call at least uh, three or four weeks ahead of time and she will uh, get you on. Again, thank you for watching, and God willing, we will see you next Sunday.